recall in 1974 summer course Swami sang one bhajan it explains what role Swami has given for bhajans in his scheme of things. Narayan bhajan, Narayan, that is how it commences. And the last stanza, bhajan se man ko sajan banakar bhakti mark sikhla diya. Bhajan se man ko sajan banakar bhakti mark sikhla diya. Sai bhajan se bhausagar ko paran bhe sikhla diya. Look at the importance. Sai bhajan se bhausagar ko paran bhe sikhla diya. Patito dhari, parti vihari, sai murari narayan. That is the role given for bhajans. But one important thing is, we should concentrate, know the meaning, Sing from the heart. Directly it reaches Swami. I recall in those days of 70s or even 80s, whenever Swami was not very happy or not pleased with the boys, they used singing bhajans as an instrument to please Swami. They would plan it in such a way, hey, today we will sing bhajans. Swami will be happy. Really Swami used to become happy for mere bhajans. That is the kind of role given. But while singing there must be concentration. Once I was sitting for bhajans in Swai Kulvantha, Swami was not talking to me. I was praying to Swami and chanting His name Sai, 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 and so on. Dr. Alreja came from the interview room, straight walked to me and said, Swami wanted me to convey to you that when you chant his name, you should chant concentrating on the name and with love. If you do it mechanically, it is no use. I was shocked. Such is Swami's concern, omnipresence, omniscience, and love for the devotees. We are fortunate that we have come to Swami and we have entered into Swami's orbit. He has written in one letter to me, Trigunatma Kamaina Manavatum Naku. Daivatumunakante minchina penidhi sai sanidhi. Greater than the treasure of the whole world or even divinity itself is the good fortune to come into sai sanidhi. Sai is area of attention, protection, guidance. How lucky we are. We have been able to just like that walk into it. One uniqueness about people who participate in Swami's mission is that people who participate should concentrate on doing the work. There everything is being taken care of by Swami. Swami takes care of them. There is no question of suffering for people who come to Swami. There is only joy immediate and later on. Why we, should, we may be knowing it, but it must come to the surface of our mind and translate itself into action. So no one suffers having come to Swami. It is your experience and my experience. 1973 I came to Swami and then onwards 
as Harihar was telling in introductory statements that I have been with Swami. There are so many lessons, so many things which I have learned from Swami. No saying of His, no action of His is casual or not having meaning. There is meaning in whatever He says and whatever He does. Once I told in the interview room in Puttaparthi, Swami, Miru, Yemi Chepina Mantra Muntekada, Swami, whatever you say is like mantra. Swami said, You are wrong. Not like mantra, mantra itself. Swami's words are mantras, not like mantra. Such is the power invested in what Swami says, what Swami speaks. There are innumerable things. There is meaning in whatever he says, whatever he does. Every gesture of his is packed with meaning and a message. But by his own grace, who should be able to get and benefit out of it? There are quite a few incidents which convey meaning, message of Swami. One thing which Swami wants is, Swami wants us to practice things. Don't merely listen to it. I don't need your appreciation. You don't say, you don't have to say, Swami, your speech was wonderful. No, that is not what is required. It is meant for you. Practice it. In a message given to me, in English, he wrote it. The best method of spreading Vedanta philosophy is to live it. There is no other royal road. Very clear. Best method of spreading is you live it, you practice it. You convey more effectively than giving thundering type of speeches and all that. No one will believe it. They may appreciate you, but they forget, you forget, everything is gone. But practice it. That's what happens when you sing bhajans. We are lifted into a new world altogether. Every bhajan is almost like an Upanishad. So pregnant with meaning, bringing our, before our mind's eye, Swami, His love, His compassion, His grace. I wish to spend a few minutes in recalling some of the incidents from my experience on my stay. One incident was that one should have, every devotee should have only one kind of relationship with his chosen God. Today he should not say, oh, you are my father. Tomorrow you should not say, you are my preceptor. Third day you should not say, you are Krishna to me, I love you, Swami. There are different kinds of devotion, but what Swami wants is, have only one approach. I used to write letters to Swami, conveying sometimes the problem, sometimes my own problem, sometimes my appreciation, my love for Swami, after Swami's discourses and after some certain functions and incidents. I used to address him differently. During Dasara time, if I write a letter, he would be my mother, divine mother. Krishna Ashtami, he was my more than a friend, more than that is a lover almost. And father, guru and all that, guru put him at time, guru and all that. Once, he took my letter into his hand. He was reading my letter. He called me and told me, you should have one approach, one kind of approach towards me. It is not from reading from books. It has a different impact and force 
on our hearts. From that day onwards, I told him also, Swami, you are my dear mother. I am your child. Have it. Have that relationship. I used to follow that particular thing. Paraprema Murti Sarva Devata Surupini Saima. The way that I would address Swami in my letters. Swami used to reply some letters. He has written quite a number of letters. I have them with me. All of them in Telugu, except in one message which he has given to me on 24th of April 1974 when he visited our house in Bangalore. That is in English. So, I was, when I was writing letters in, in, I wish to quote one thing from Swami's letter. In one letter Swami wrote, Itlu ni sai tai. Thus, your sai mother. Acknowledgement from Swami. Swami is my mother. And you have seen what Swami, you have heard what Swami has spoken about. His kind, which shows his kindness, his love for me. On Guru Purnima Day 2009, I was taken aback. I didn't know that there will be a kind of function. In fact, that morning there was a function. Afternoon I sent away my son-in-law, daughter and others to Bangalore. The function is over. Celebrations over, we have been blessed. Evening he comes, tells Mr. Chakravarti, what, we have not done anything at all. Come on, put chairs and all that. And we were asked to go and occupy. And Guru Purnima discourse was about four of us, in which he makes such kind references, which only a divine mother can make. Very honestly, I must confess to you, I don't deserve that much of love. It will be sufficient for me. In 2006, before the function, there were celebrations. Swami gave me kadiyam and all that. I brought the results to Vrindavan. Swami told me, we are going to have celebrations. Special blessings for you. Sanmanam. I told the jewelers that they will have to put six sovereigns and make a kadiyam for you. I told Swami, Swami, why all that for us? It would be sufficient if we get a little place at your lotus feet. Why all this? Swami said, Adi nishtam kadu, na icha. It's not your wish, my will. I said, Swami, it's okay. Why I am mentioning this is, such cheese is allowed. So, then onwards, I knew that I'll have to have only one kind of relationship with Swami. This is one incident. Another incident was, in 1974, in Bangalore city, there were some people who were not talking right things about Swami. Some false things, misunderstanding, and their own interpretation, their own imagination. But all the same, accusing or insinuating Swami. I was here, 1973 I joined. I used to stay here day and night. I have seen with my own eyes how Swami showers his love. So abundantly and all people, no discrimination at all for showering love. He would love, shower love, but the only thing is they should be able to take him. How much of benefit one gets depends upon one's own capacity rather than what Swami gives. And in the newspapers also, there were certain references which were not facts. They were all false. I wrote to Swami, Swami, you should not allow these people to talk or to publish such false things about you, Swami. It is really wrong. They should be prevented from doing such things, Swami. You are God. You are all-powerful. See that they don't do it, Swami. 
It is hurting us. I wrote that. That very evening, Swami was going to city. We were there, about to say, Sai Ram and say bye to Swami when he was going to city. Swami asked me, get into the car. I got into the car. He took me in the car. On the way, somewhere near Baldota Brothers or something like that, in Whitefield Road, he asked me, ye me letter nasnave. what, you have written a letter? Yes, Swami. It's very difficult to tolerate such things, Swami. It hurts us because they are not facts. Swami said, Oh ho. Okay. What you said may be a fact. But you don't have any right. Watch the words. You don't have any right to pray to Swami to take away the freedom given to them. If you have the freedom to worship me and to adore me, they have the freedom to criticize me and to accuse me. Freedom is misused, freedom is well used. There will be consequences. But I as God cannot take away the freedom given to them. Look at Swamis. My God, it was fantastic. Then I asked Swami, Swami, okay Swami, can I ask you something? Yes. Swami, such statement, such criticism should not come to my notice, Swami. Ah, that prayer you can pray. Pray to me that they should not come to your notice. But don't pray that they don't have the right to do that. There will be consequences. They cannot do it for any time. Satyam, truth will triumph. Satyam eva jayate. And nothing will happen to Swami. Swami's name is such that if anyone takes that name, even if a sinner takes my name, Sai, Sai, he will be saved. When such is the power of my name, how can they tarnish my name? They can't do anything. You don't be worried about it. Let them do. That was a wonderful experience for me. And you know, sometimes when the media are ill informed people, ignorant people, people who have such bad tendencies in them, they may talk anything. We should not pay attention to that. That should not touch our heart. We should be steady. Another occasion, Swami told me, I am an ocean and Judea. I am always full. People coming to me or people going will not affect me. What is required is, what is required is the during the summer season, the rivers flow, the ice melts, rivers flow, I am full. During rainy season, rains come, rivers flow, I am full. One person coming or going doesn't matter at all. I do my job, it is for them to do what, whatever they want. I don't interfere, I don't expect. Once I do a particular thing, I forget about it. But he said, this is important. You should be steady. You should not waver. You are as a devotee, you should be steady, he said. So when we listen to such things, ill-informed, ignorant people, who should ignore it? Should not be affected in the least. We should not even criticize. Criticism is also indulgence. Let those people suffer for what they will do it. Swami never encouraged any kind of confrontation with such people. Of their own, they will go. Another incident was, the Swami, when they, he is going in the darshan lines, he goes and talks to a person, something, and he replies. Then afterwards, he proceeds, goes, passes three or four people, suddenly he turns back and comes to the person to whom he spoke, 
he creates vibhuti and gives it to him this created some problems for me but i had a loving mother who has given me full freedom to ask any question otherwise it is difficult to ask firstly you don't get a chance and secondly you don't know what swami's reaction would be but that was not there that fear was not there for me at that time i said swami can i ask you a question ask ask in telugu i said swami meeku ellappudu anni telusa lekapothe eppudu kavala anukunte appudu telustunda swami do you know all the things always or whenever you call back call some information the information comes to you and you respond because what made me to ask that question is he goes a few steps and comes back and creates could he not have created then itself did he walk up and then ask does he deserve does he come back and create this kind of thing he told me no you are wrong i know all the things always naaku anni eppudu telusu aithe nenu enno natakalu aadutu untaru swami told in vrindavan i will be playing many roles you don't be misled by that have firm faith in my omniscience i may act as if i do not know or i have not known it at all but you should not fall into the trap of your own maya have firm faith i know everything all the time but i do what is appropriate i don't have to read books to find out what is appropriate there is a natural and spontaneous knowledge with me which makes me do just the right thing so i was thrilled oh my god saira swami is parabrahma swarupa not at a particular time not at other time this is one trap sometimes we feel when an avatar plays a human role we should know that he is playing that role but he is god we should not have such a thing now suppose you say well there was a time when we could have played all that role but now now swami has left the body he says i am present always i put on a body human body and come complete my task then i throw away the body and go but remember for people who have trusted me who have loved me who have that faith in me i am always with them what is the proof the proof is the experience of such people that is the proof swami has not left us swami has not made us anatha swami has become closer to us i know how difficult it is to bear loss of that beautiful lovely form that graceful form i remember three sessions three sessions swami would speak on certain topics and our students really this thousand mothers love are much more than that they love swami and swami loves them others cannot understand out of ignorance we may even question them why all these fellows are giving so much of trouble to swami but swami is swami they would go run not caring for whether they would fall and break their heads and find a place in the front close to swami swami gets up and speaks i am telling about three session and he used to speak and this one fellow would be doing pad seva when he is speaking swami tolerates it another fellow takes his kerchief and puts it up like this swami allows it for some time after some time he takes it he wipes and he just throws it again it comes up he is not disturbing he is a human being 
Can you cause such inconvenience to Swami when he is speaking? But no such thing with Swami. Swami loves, loves, and loves. That is why when you say that Swami's love is more than thousand mothers' love, only the experienced hearts know it. For others, these are all words. So, Swami knows whom to reward, whom to give, when and what. But He knows everything. We should have firm faith in Swami. In another two incidents, in 1979, somewhere during that time, by then there were a few people who studied with us, they did their degree, their postgraduate, they did, they become lecturers, some of them were doing PhD, they were senior students, they were a batch of about 78 or 9 students, on whom Swami invested a lot of time. He treated them as his own friends, he would give weightage for whatever they say. He filled them with love. When he gives so much of love, he also sometimes tests us. Have they digested it? Has it helped them to grow? Or has it fed their ego and they are ruining themselves? If such a thing happens, he wants to correct. So, that was the context. He stopped talking suddenly to those people, those seven items, all of them. And he said, I know I say you want to go away to your places and uh, go away. Why do you stay here with me? And they had never thought of it. Maybe there is in their hearts, in the seed forum, a thought to go. I don't know. But as far as I could see, there was nothing like that. But Swami said, stop talking. Probably it was a test. This went on. Before Swami went for darshan, Swami would come and sit in a room. And quite a few students will be in that room, a few VIPs and a few teachers and all that. During this particular time, all these seven or eight of them will be there. There will be tense atmosphere in the room. Swami would not talk a word, they would not talk anything. And no one dare to disturb unless it is very urgent, which can, which doesn't hurt Swami. This went on for almost one week. One of them, after these seven days of this kind of situation, made bold and with a lot of love, lot of kind of respect. He told Swami, Swami, ah, yem, yem. Swami, memu miku chala tondaristunnam, Swami. Meerusu santoshangani leru. Swami, we are giving you a lot of trouble. You are not at all happy. And if you feel, Swami, that if we go away to our places, if you will be happy, we will go away, Swami. It is difficult for us, Swami, but we don't mind. We want Swami to be happy, Swami. Ah! Oh, such a great uh, prayer, great request, Swami said. He said, is that all that you have understood, I say, of Swami? For how long have you stayed? Where will you go? You will go to your places where Swami is not there. Do you mean to say that? Swami is not there in your place? Is Swami not omnipresent? How dare you say that you go to go away to a place where I am not there, I am everywhere. That you should know first. Secondly, will Swami be happy when you go away from me? Is that for that purpose I have trained you and I have given so much of love to you? To drive you away to your places? No. I will be happy only when you satisfy me in your behavior, conduct, growth, evolution. I want you to be good, good leaders, ideal people. 
That's what I want rather than to go away to your places. And it was after Swami talked this, there was a stunned silence. Everyone felt the divinity revealing himself. Once he came, morning, he sat down in his chair, in his sofa, and suddenly made a statement which confused us. Dr. Rajeshwarama, Hari, Hari, Hari and Pilistundi. Visa Satan Lalu, Paina, Vishnu, Vishnu, Vishnu and Pilistundi. Hari, Vishnu, Anta, Nenu, Nijumaina, Hari, Nijumaina, Vishnu, Nenu. English version of it. Dr. Rajeshwarama calls Hari, Hari, Hari. There is one Dr. Hari in the hospital. Dr. Rajeshwarama was the medical superintendent, there was a youngster, and naturally, very handily, she would be calling, hey, Hari, Kadara, come here, Hari. And there was one Vishnu, who was a cook, who was cooking food and helping. Madam, Mrs. Ratanala, she would be naturally calling, hey, Vishnu, Kadara. And Swami comes and tells, okay, I'm a Vishnu and to me, okay, I'm a Hari and to me. Nijamayana Hari Vishnu Neni Kiduna Nan Pilche Avali Leru There is no one to call me He said And it became a big joke, humor Quite a few people enjoyed Also realized the truth behind it After this Swami said, ah, you be here, I'll go for Dasana and come back He went out he gave the son and came back. Sat down in his soul and said, What are the weapons or insignia of Vishnu? I say. Someone, an elderly person or student or someone said, Swami Shanku Chakra Gada Padma, conch, wheel, mace, and lotus flower. Oh, correct. What is the meaning or significance of those things? Some elderly person, I think, said, Swami Senku stands for, the call stands for sound, Vonkaram, and representing creation, God, Vishnu can create. Vishnu is the master of time. Wheel is that wheel of time. Vishnu is all powerful with the maze. And he is pure with the lotus. Swami said, uh, first three are all right, correct. But fourth you are wrong. He said, he elaborated. He said, that stands for your hearts. They are in my hand. I can do whatever I want. I can make you think in a particular way. Almost like a human being. As if like, so casually, can anyone make can anyone make uh, it possible to think in any way one likes? It's impossible. But the fact with Swami, he said. Then someone among the boys said, Swami, why don't you make us always think good things, Swami? And Swami said, I can make it, right? But then you should give your mind to me. Have that faith, surrender to me. I can definitely make you think whatever you want. Very casual. One day he would come and just say, what is the meaning of Radha? It is not Maharani Kale student. Radha is a devotee who makes Aradhana as Adhara and continuously worship. Dara, Aradha, Adhar. And what powerful messages. Swami used to convey. So this was what happened in case of that boy. He was stunned. He, was, he just kept quiet. One of the, there is another person out of seven. 
they were all my students most of them some were science students they were not mine but these commerce students were my students i had given them love and they had given me love and i was coming from mandir going to hostel he was going from hostel to i'm sorry i was going towards mandir and he was coming from mandir to the hostel still swami was in his room on that day and i just happen to just see him i say how are you nityanand and he said sir what is there for us sir you know our entire life is swami we have dedicated our lives to swami we love swami even if we are thrown in sahara desert we will have to take his name and live swami and swami is not talking to us what is there in our life sir i was moved to tears young fellow having a lot of potential a ranker he could get a job anywhere he likes he has totally dedicated himself and he tells even if we are throwing sara desert we let live by his name i could not say anything more i said let us pray to swami and i just avoided and i went when i went into the room swami was sitting ha ah, emi emi le sare ha ah, now you are coming no what happened on the way he said i said swami i met nityanand ha ah, what did your shishya say what did your student say swami papa swami maku swami tapite if leaving swami what else is there bereft of swami we don't have any life at all even if we are thrown in sahara desert we let live by his name swami is not speaking sir we do not know what to do he said swami then i said so far okay papam swami and <laughs> swami's response should see look here banjundaya now i was putting myself as a great sympathizer before god who is a notion of mercy and compassion what right do i have to sympathize and say papam swami swami said look here nanjundaya i am butter i am in their hearts in their own hearts i am there i am butter slightest heat means i melt any warmth means i melt any severe praying thinking means i meant that's what he meant he did not say those words he said only i am butter i am in their hearts slightest heat or warmth means i would melt it has not touched me look at those words it has not touched me probably it has touched you i was i don't know what i could say i felt ashamed of myself for telling papam swami but the facts to be noted the message to be taken is the swami is in our hearts this is not imagination or some exhortation or some kind of encouragement and to, to inspire us not that fact he is within us he is in our hearts and he is sulabha prasanna particularly sai you don't know dharma samsthapanarthaya sambhavam yuge we say god comes down to establish dharma but this god that is incidental that is not at all main thing for him transforming devotees giving them freedom taking them taking out of the vicious circle of that karma law of karma so he said i am in their hearts swami tappa in the swami i said and i realized and i felt so thrilled at the statements which swami made then another very interesting incident it was go class time today is a, tomorrow there may be go class to me 
it was goclastomy time 1974 or 76 not 75 even 75 i don't know chitravati river was in spate buses are not going in that road we had to go via kadri to puttaparthi for goclastomy function i and a colleague of mine we went and uh, by the time we went, the function was over. Go class to me was over. We went to the veranda and asked their people, can, can we meet Swami? Yes, Swami may be sitting there. Should we mention anything to Swami? Please mention that I have come. Nanjuda has come. Nanjuda wants to see you, Swami. Mention. I said, we will do it, sir. Wait. He went up, told Swami. Swami said, ask him to come up. I went up. There was Swami Karunyananda who was doing Pada Seva, only one person. Then Swami said, as soon as I stepped in, ah, I told Karunyananda just now, Nanjunda will be coming with a red basket, flowers and fruits in that. Ask him, ask him, he said. I don't need to ask, nor would he tell. It was a fact. I was, it gave me a lot of joy. And Swami Karunyananda, doing Pada Seva, bending down his head, was muttering to himself, ah, ah, just now Swami was telling that you would be coming, you would be getting all these things, etc. After completing this, I just asked Swami, can I garland? Do it, he said, with a lot of enthusiasm. Do it. I garlanded Swami. Swami, there are fruits. Can I keep at your lotus feet? Keep them. I kept the fruits of the lotus feet. It gave me a lot of joy, a thrill. Fruits of the lotus feet. And the Swami had already lifted me. I was in the seventh circle somewhere. By then, Swami had different, sufficiently trained me. I have gone through many ups and downs. Swami has taught me quite a few things. And that was the time when I have to be shaken a little and promoted to another class. He said, I asked Swami, Swami, I bent down and said, Swami, Bhakti Vakat Mita Chala. I mean, if we have devotion, would it be sufficient? I was thinking, yes, it would be sufficient. And if you give, if you are a devotee, I'll take care of every all that was my imagination. And then I told Swami, Bhakti Vakatunte Sala. Swami changed his face suddenly and said, Ha, ah, Itla Bhakti Unte. What Bhakti? Garlanding Swami, keeping the fruits, and feeling so happy. If that is Bhakti, Itla Bhakti Unte. Look at the words, chosen words, 100% truth, spiritual truth. He says, you will be a burden to me, I will be carrying. He doesn't say that I uh, will not carry you. But it is not useful to you. This kind of devotion is not useful to you. I just saw, of course, so many qualities are given and all that. It was not as if Swami was angry with me. But Swami says, true, Swami says facts which are appropriate to each one. What he tells you may not, he may not tell me. What he tells me may not, he may not tell you. Waits for the time, he has enough patience. For Swami, the concept of time is infinity. But you should have sincerity. Manasyekam, vachasyekam, karmanyekam, as far as possible at least he should be there. Should not be a hypocrite. For hypocrisy, there is no place for Swami. Once it so happened that some of the people who wanted to go away, they had a meeting in Puttaparthi, they decided to go away, 1981. One of them came, Swami was sitting, relaxing on a sofa. He came almost half bent, almost like this. To Swami and said, Swami, Swami, Swami. Swami suddenly got up from the sofa 
became straight and sat and said, Ah, Kamal, Kabaya, Kabaya, when did you come? Come, come, come. I was shocked. What did this? Swami is paying so much of attention, so much of praise for this fellow whom we know. Why this kind of thing? He was pretending. He was hypocritical. Swami holds the mirror. Swami makes him believe that Swami also loves him. You are not loving, Swami also cannot love you. That is not required. But if you are having sincerity, Swami definitely responds. Sai ni hrudayas thai ni dhrudum cheskunna vaan. Atlaina, Sai pattilo unnaade ne baadu yandukku. Ade maya. Sai ye maayi. Atane hai. Avna kada. I wrote Swami, I want to see Swami. Swami is not at all in Vrindavan Swami. We want to just see you Swami. Swami says, have you made sure that Swami is resident of your heart? If so, why do you think so much pain that I am in Parthi? And that is Maya, that is illusion. And Sai is mother, Sai is Mai, Atane Hai, Avna Kada. So this Kanuvi Pichuda Rorana, these things, and we put them together. We need never, never, never give ourselves to. If we feel like crying because we can't see that beautiful form, let us cry. But forget about it. We should not say that Swami is not with us. Kanta, Venta, Inta, Janta, Undi, Santa Samistune Udar Swami. He is with our, us, He is uh, in our company at home, and in our mind, in our thoughts, He is there. Kanta in vision, Inta at home, Venta with you, Janta together, I am there with you, above you, below you, and all that. So we should have that faith. That's what this uh, incident of Anujjalani and uh, Nityananda Mina, those two convey. Then I was telling about we, we have bhakti, is it sufficient? Yes, yes, it is sufficient. Bhaktuni karna gopadu leru. There is no person greater than a bhakta. Nothing greater than devotion. But you should have devotion. But remember one thing. That one need not aspire to have all those 36 qualities. That's why Swami has said, Arthi, Artharthi, Jignasu, Gnani. Swami told one of the lecturers, why do you worry about all those things? You are teaching in the college. No. Do your job, I'll take care of your children. He has taken care like that. There was another instance, another incident. 1976. On that day, I think I wore a suit with a tie. I went up. There were some senior students. Swami looked at me and held me, held my collar and said, watch the words. He said, Ye mamma, kotta chir katko What ma? you seem to be wearing a new sari. I had worn a suit now. And he turned to the boys and said, Ye mira, nanjundaya ante, I used to be a little more serious and strict in the classes. So they must have told Swami. Just then I had joined, 1973 I had joined. And uh, so, I don't have any fear at all, he just said. Okay. They also had a smile. I also had a smile. And Swami, more out of love, he made that statement. Then he asked me, what do you want? I didn't know the background why he is asking me. Really he didn't want anything. I said, nothing Swami. Uh -huh. Not that way. What do you want? I said, really nothing Swami. Hey, when I ask you what do you want, you have to give me some reply. You can't say I don't want anything or things like that. I said, Swami, 
I want Swami. Swami said, these are his words. Nannu ne nitsko nannu. Inke mai naadu. My God, Swami had given himself to you. If I am not aware of it, if I am, don't use it, if I don't conduct and respond myself, it's my mistake, but Swami says, I have given myself to you. There was some background for that. Then he said, ask something material, not me. I said, what should I ask? I don't know. I never thought of anything. I was a teacher, you know. I said, Swami, give me a pen. And he had a big smile at my silly, you know, asking for a pen with Swami. And Adhisthan lay. Ah, sorry. He said, and there he ended the talk. But there was a function following that. In that function, very elaborately made, there was one a uh, hall here and in that hall, old college, old Vrindavan, I'm just telling and he there was a very big function and I went there, I was shocked my god, what is all this? of course, three years there were good results, some ranks and all that came for our hospital in commerce, was considered to be one of the best colleges in Bangalore University, where there are a number of colleges and uh, then Swami wanted to bless me. I used to spend days and nights here. My family was very, very graciously cooperating with me. In fact, people doubted whether I had some misunderstanding with family. Therefore, I am nights and day I am staying because I was about 34, 36 at that time. One person, in fact, asked me, Professor Kasturi, to be very good. What is this Vairagya Nanjundaya? You are not going home at all, you are staying here only. Such was great opportunity for me. So, function was arranged and uh, Swami made Dr. Bhagavantam speak and then he gave me a silver plate with fruits in it and gave it. And while giving, with a sweet smile, mother's smile, he just said, Rozu, Tintlu Bonchi, take your food in this plate every day. And I, I mean, I do not know how to take these things. But one thing is that that is the nature of Swami, He gives. No one should take that particular thing as if it is something special of him. We are all ordinary. And sometimes Swami chooses. Today he may choose X, tomorrow he may choose Y, but it is up to him. Once he chooses, he makes him capable of handling the situation. John Hislop asked one question to Swami. Swami, make me a worthy instrument. Swami said, once I choose any person as an instrument, there is no question of worthy or unworthy or things like that. One can be, one automatically becomes worthy instrument, he said, this is time. So, uh, that is how Swami showers love and that is how he said, Nannu nene Then one more incident, two more incidents or something like that. He said, we were framing syllabus for MCOM in Bangalore University. When we were framing a syllabus for MCOM in Bangalore University, we had completed one Dr. Shanmugam from IAM, Professor Krishna Swami from Bangalore University and myself. We had completed framing the syllabus. Somewhere in 1981, 81 the university came and we were asked to frame the syllabus, we had completed that. And on the last day or so, Swami called us in, all the three of us. We went in, into the interview room. And when we entered into the interview room, 
Swami. Of course, Gary Lahav was the syllabus. Are you happy? Have you taken care to see that it takes a few subjects of MBA also? Management courses also must be there in MCOM. You make your MCOM such that, that it can be even a substitute for MBA. All that he said, yes, Swami, have taken care to see because there was one professor from IAM also, Professor Krishna Swami, who was professor of uh, commerce in Bangalore University, there was MCOM for a long time. He was a very senior professor. So we said, yes, Swami. And after all this minute talk was over, he called me closer. I went there. When I went there, Swami looked at my hand. I had a ring with three stones. He asked me, you give it. Took it off and gave it to him. He said, do you want this alone or can I give you something else? If you say, I want that, it's a mistake. If you say, I want something else, it's a mistake. And uh, I naturally said, Swami, whatever Swami wants, let him give Swami. It's okay, Swami. As if uh, I would have been happy if he gives me something else. But then how could I mention just like that? So I said, whatever Swami gives. Ah, no, not that. Now, this ring was given to look at his omniscience. This ring was given to you by your in-laws at the time of marriage of your sister-in-law. Suppose they say that uh, that ring is very precious, we have given, what have you done? And he said, no Swami, no one will ask, whatever Swami is. He took that, held it close to his mouth and said, twice, oof, oof. And the ring, whole ring changed, openly. And there were two diamonds, cross, not in a line. And came and could No mothers speak to children, not grown up ones. Came and could not swami and take. Uff and take, yem kaos na utundi. Avun swami, naku tel swami ni. Then he said, when you go home, you put your hand up like this and show to your wife your hand like this. <laughs> and she will ask you, what is that? Tell that Swami has given me this ring. Then you should tell her that one stone, one diamond is Swami. The other diamond is yours, that is myself. One diamond was Swami, the other diamond was myself. This is our relationship. My God. It was something which I really did not know how to just say anything with her. True enough. Swami, so, mean, then that was over. Next day, Swami so, called me inside. There was one more room in the interview room. He called me inside and he said, Now, suppose your wife asks, What happened to my ring? My brother gave that ring. What did he say? No, Swami, she will not ask that, Swami. No, no, you give that ring. I gave that ring. He took that ring in, like this and he said, oh, oh. and he shook his hand, hand like this. There was some sound. There were two rings. One ring was the original ring, with three stones, the other one was diamond ring. And he put that three stone ring into my pocket, touch it like this, keep it safe. He said, and he put the other one here. And when your wife asks, you can give it. And when I went, of course, she was happy. She just like that. She asked, I told all these things because one thing is there is nothing like very casual with Swami. One must literally do whatever Swami wants. I'll tell you another one instance. Then I told all these things. She was happy. We were all happy. 
I was to be, I was to join Swami's university as the controller. Swami called me and asked me, "Hey, me, controller, go check. Nikhil Shunda, only himself and myself. Only two of us were there in the upstairs." Swami, I'm checking the chest and Swami. At that time, Dr. Gokak and Chakravarti have suggested your name that uh, you could become the controller here. Are you willing? Swami, where is the question of willing? Swami, what else Swami tells and do it? Not that I say. Not that. Would you be happy? Do you want it? I said, Swami, let me tell facts, Swami. I don't have any such thing that I should become controller. If Swami wants me to come, I'll come. Otherwise, no. Not necessary, Swami. Oh, he Swami himself was. In a way, cornered because I had no such thing, honestly, not like that dream. Whatever Swami says, I would do that. Song. Then Swami said, "You come. I'll tell you time, but don't tell this to anyone. This is important. Don't tell this to anyone." He said. I said, "Okay, Swami. I'll come. You bring only little samans for the kitchen, etc. Don't bring all your." Luggages. Keep that house also there, but you come and join as the deputy controller. I said, "Okay, Swami." When I came, I did not share that with my wife. Swami swore it. Swami swore it was law for me. I hurt a number of people. I'll tell one more instance a little later. Then my I came to college, and in the college. Some of our colleagues, Narayi and others, they will be knowing it. That Principal Narendra and myself, we were working with a lot of understanding together. So I felt it's my duty to share with Principal that I have to go to Prasanthi Layam as the controller, and I should not take him by surprise, and that should not cause any inconvenience to the college. That was my idea. So I told him. Sir, Swami has just asked me uh, to come to university as the controller. So I am telling you when Swami tells, I have to go. In a few days, Swami came to Brindavan, and uh, one of those days, uh, he talked to Principal Principal Narendra very innocently. He told Swami, uh, "It seems uh, you want Manjundaya there." And we have to take another lecturer or something like that. He told. Ah, uh, Swami said, "Okay, okay." He was chipping. Who told you? Nanjunda himself told me, Swami. Oh, my God. Then I went to Swami. Swami sent word for me. I went. Amy, no, Narendra told chipping. Why it's like this? Yes, Swami. I told. I think that it is my duty, Swami. We are working together. Our college. Suppose there is some inconvenience, and it will be wrong, no, Swami. So I told Swami. I have not told even my wife, Swami, but this is because it is college. I told, Hey, look up. Hey, keep quiet. You have violated my order. Oh, he said. He was angry, but he did not send me out <laughs> because with best of intentions. Why I say that is literally you have to just do things. And you cannot take. He wrote quite a few letters. In one letter, he writes to me, "This is true of most of us. Therefore, I am sharing it." Ni chittamu parisudham. Adi sai guru devun kaptu kuni poi nadi. Inda kante manjdi kalilu yekkada dalakar. In another letter, he says. निमुषम अवकाश लेनी पनवचे कम को इंत आलस्य कम मीन लेटर इक क्षण विराम लेनी पन 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 उ नीक कम अंपचुना नी पै गल दया प्रेम प्रतिफल Honestly, I don't think that I deserve anything. It is just in his nature he gives. He writes to me, "Why there is delay in writing a letter to you? 
because I am so busy, I don't have any time at all. And he says, in spite of that such shortage of time, if I am writing to you, it is an expression of my love to you. And he says, of course, I faced a lot of criticism from my neighbors, etc. I never cared for that. Me chittamu parisuddhamu adi saayarudhamna kattuko ni poyinadi. He tells me, world will be seen by people depending upon the color of glasses they wear. Why do you bother about your criticism of other people? You make sure that your thinking is all right. Don't care for such opinions. He wrote to me. And in the same letter, when it comes, he just says, he writes to me in the same letter, Kayamus samsara kartavya karmalaku bhavamu swami prema makarandamu grolutaku. Buddhi daivamu pai. Mana, the, and uh, work, the some, some, some substance of it is this, that you give your mind to me, discharge your duties. I mean, it is almost like a guidance for people. It is a guidance for uh, people that you don't give up your family. Mommy doesn't like all such hypocrisies, all such stunts. Do your job. And that doesn't prevent you from having love for me. Your mind to me. So this is what he wrote to. One instance, last one. In Shivam, 1974, Swami took us in his aeroplane to Hyderabad. There we went to Shivam. We were asked to stay in Satyamurti's house, which was a neighboring house. And Swami was staying in Shivam. After we went, we were sitting, Swami was taking his bath. Kamodhani and another, some Vedic scholar, they were chanting Rudram. And Swami was taking bath. I was thrilled. I said, how lucky these people are, they are chanting Vedam when God himself is having his bath. Such a great meritori meritorious deed. I also remember in the plane, so-called big people, very important people, celebrities, they were trying to get a word from Swami, touch his feet, have, uh, make Swami look at them and all that. He was not giving so much of attention, of course he was not hurting. But when we went there, after the bath was over, he took us to show all the rooms. A few of the lecturers from Swami's college and probably one or two VIPs. I don't remember the VIPs, but lecturers were there. He showed, this is my, this room, that room, he was showing us. I mean, it stunned me. What is this? How to understand Swami? We are ordinary lecturers. We are paid for what work we do. And Swami is paying so much of attention, explaining everything in his room, in his house, in his residence. Whereas such big people, so-called very, very great scholars, rich people, people in power and all that, they could not get this. This was what in my mind was. I had the freedom by then. I told Swami, Swami was showing when he came out, and then I just told Swami, 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 I do not know how to understand Swami. Swami said, Nannu artham ki prayatnam cheyavaddu. Don't try to understand me. Anubhavinchu, anandinchu. How much of benefit I have got this from mantra, from this mantra? Otherwise, we are not having that intellectual power or that purity of heart to understand divinity in the proper sense. We will be misled, we will be misunderstanding, we will be misinterpreting. Our monkey minds ask a number of questions, why should Swami do this? 
Why should Swami speak to him? He doesn't attend Suprabhatam. I attend Suprabhatam. He doesn't talk to me. He talks to him. Swami gave him an interview, particularly among the boys, I am telling. Never, never do such a thing. Your mind, your intellect cannot understand. What you should have is love for Swami. Don't try to measure Swami. Don't try to comprehend Swami. Your intellect is very small to understand a divine phenomena, a cosmic phenomena. So, that was another don't try to understand me. Enjoy and experience. Enjoy. Experience my divinity. Have love. Love is all that you should have. Open your heart. I am a resident of your heart. 50th birthday time, some scholars, there was some poets conference. They were describing Swami in beautiful words, poetry and all that. Then we came back to Swami's room and I told Swami, Swami, they were writing, reading such beautiful poems, Swami. Swami was sarcastically laughing at them. Why, Swami? Look at Nanyunda, I am in their hearts. They were describing me, praising me and all that from the head. They don't have any experience with me, but they are using their intellect and to praise me. It never touches me. Swami, I enjoyed the previous one. You have it. You are, if you enjoy it, you enjoy. But I can't enjoy just because you are enjoying. And he said, when our boys write poems, they may not be very great, but I enjoy because they are innocent, they are pure, they love me. Therefore, I enjoy. Thank you.